Hi everyone, in this video we're going to start to talk about um, one of the most important aspects of, of analytical chemistry or doing quantitative measurements in analytical chemistry and that is constructing a calibration line. Okay, so we're going to talk through the steps or the, the, the processes that we use and I'm going to demonstrate um, using a, a sample set of axes how you might go about constructing the calibration line and then using it. Okay, so let's start off by thinking about the steps that we would use to, um, to prepare a calibration line. So the first thing that we would do is that we're, pre we're preparing standard solutions. So standard solutions are, are, are samples of, you know, that, that we are preparing of, very, of known concentration of the, the substance that we're going to be testing for in an unknown sample. So if you're trying to test for lead, you would make standard solutions containing a, a known amount of lead. If you're looking for cadmium, you're going to prepare standard solutions of a known concentration of cadmium. Okay, and that we would be preparing those standard solutions to certain amounts in parts per million. So remember that parts per million is the same as concentrations in milligrams per litre. Okay, so very small levels because we're dealing with trace amounts. We want to be in the right ballpark for the samples that we're going to, um, that we're actually going to be testing. Okay, the next thing that we're doing is that we measure the absorbance of our samples. So we place them into our AAS instrument one at a time. We measure the absorbance, so how much light of that known wavelength is absorbed by our sample. Um, you know, so remember that it's a value between 0 and 1. Um, so 1 being 100% absorbance, so all the light is absorbed. 0 being 0 absorbance, so none of the light is absorbed. Okay, so then what we do is then we're going to plot these values of um, absorbance which is always on our y-axis um, versus concentration, which is on our x. So our concentration is on our x-axis. Okay, so concentration in parts per million or milligrams per litre or for, for things that I'm not dealing with in trace levels, it might be in moles per litre or, or some, some value that, that, that relates to what we're measuring. And then the last thing that we do is we do a straight line of best fit So straight line of best fit, and that passes through the origin of 0, 0. Because from here, this is an important concept point, that if we have zero concentration on our sample, we should have zero absorbance. Okay, so that, so that it's logical for our line to start at 0, 0, and pass evenly through all of our data points, um, and that's the line that we're going to use for all of our subsequent measurements. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate to you in a, in a second, just on a sample, simple set of axes, how we might go about doing this. Okay, so here we have our sample set of axes. Okay, so our y-axis and our x-axis. Okay, if you don't know that x and y is of those ones by now, go back to, uh, you know, junior school geometry. Okay, and so what we have here... We've, met, we've set up our samples and we've measured the absorbance and now we're going to plot a line. Okay, so remember, so we're plotting, so absorbance goes on our y-axis and then we're plotting concentration. Um, and so we're going to talk about it in parts per million because that relates a little bit more to what we're dealing with. Now, the, the important thing is, so absorbance is something that is a unitless quantity. Okay, so you don't measure absorbance in a unit because it's essentially like percentage. You know, it's a value between 0 and 1 um, that, that kind of reflects absorbance. So there's no need to, to place a unit there um, because it also kind of varies. Yeah, anyway, well, let's not go into that. Okay, so, but concentration is one that we do measure in units. Okay, but both of these axes need to have a consistent scale. Okay, so if I set my absorbance, I'm going to say, you know, 1.00 is up here. Okay, and then 0 is down here. All right, so I've got 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 0 0.25, okay, and so then maybe, and then I've got, you know, graduations between each one, okay, or maybe, you know, so, so depending on exactly how much space you need to set up, okay, that you would space out your scale evenly, okay, and same sort of thing with concentration. So let's say that I've measured samples up to 20 parts per million for a given analyte, for a given substance. Okay, so halfway between would be 10. Um, okay, so let's say I'm going 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Okay, so 2, 4, 6. It, it, this totally depends on what you're measuring. Okay, like, and, and so, you, so you might have done, you know, 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. 
or maybe these sort of values fit, but either way, a consistent scale is very important. That it's And your largest number needs to be larger than the biggest value, or as large as, and but, but also by making most of the space. Okay, so if you if you measured up to 20 parts per million, there's no need to go a lot to a hundred on your scale. Okay, because that's way beyond what you've actually measured and it starts to get unwieldy. Okay, um, but likewise, if you've measured up to 20, you need to go at least 20. Okay, and so then you have your samples set up at particular concentrations. So say, um, so say here I've done samples at 5, 10, 15, and 20. Okay, so I've got 5 somewhere in here, 10, 15, and 20. Okay, so let's say that at, you know, at 5, I end up with a, an absorbance of 0.2. So I'm finding 5 parts per million, 0.2, I'm using my scale, um, using the markings on the grid that I've got, and I read up and across, and then I put across. Okay, and so then at 10, you know, so say I've got 0 0.45. Okay, 15, you know, so maybe then I've got somewhere, I've got 0.75. Okay, and then at 20, I've got 0 0.9. Okay, now I realise on your graph this would be much more accurate. Um, you'd be you'd, you'd be um, using your scales accurately. Okay, and then I've also got my point at zero zero. Okay, now you don't have to put across there, but just for completeness, I'm going to do that. Okay, and so then what we're going to do to do our, our final step of constructing our calibration line, we're going to use a ruler to do a straight line of best fit. Now I don't have the luxury of a ruler to be able to, to work this out, so I'm going to freehand it as best I can. Okay, but in an actual, when you're doing this properly, you'd either get the computer to do it, or you would use a ruler and make sure that the ruler goes evenly between all of your points. Okay, so there's my straight line of best fit. Not bad for a freehand, if I have to say so myself. But what you see here is that this straight line doesn't pass through all the points. It's not dot to dot. Okay, but likewise, it's also not so far on this side that all the points are on that side of the line, or so far down here that all the points are on that side of the line. It passes as evenly as I can through all of the points, um, because that represents the trend, that the distance between those points and that straight line represents some of the uncertainty in our measurements. Okay, and so then what we do, when we're going to do our actual sample, we use the line. Okay, so even though it may not exactly fit with your data points, that the line is king. Okay, so now that you've got your line, okay, so then let's say I get an unknown sample and I measure that it has an absorbance of 0 0.6. Okay, so I'd use my scale and I'd find 0 0.6 and then I'd read it across until I get to my calibration line. And then I would take it and then I would read it down using a ruler down to my concentration axis and then I see I've got a concentration of approximately 13 parts per million. Okay, so then you can use the calibration line to identify the concentration in your unknown because you've tested it with standards and samples already. Okay, so you may well in your travels you have data that you need to plot or you may be given a calibration line that you need to use and then interpret or perhaps do some subsequent calculations. So you need to be confident to be able to do both those things. Use all the practice materials to help you build those skills. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.